welcome to Kansky lecture series and this is eyelid part 4 and in this part we are going to discuss about the miscellaneous benign tumors you know the benign tumors are that which are uh, not metastasizing and they do not have an ability to separate to the distance so first we will discuss about the capillary hemangioma Capillary hemangioma strobus, uh, strawberry nevus is one of the most common tumors of infancy. So why it is uh, nevus? Uh, because it is in pinkish in color. It is most common tumors of infancy. It is three times uh, as common in girls as boys. Um, it's a little confusing line, but that means that the boys are more, um, uh, the boys do do have a more um, uh, boys has a lesser number of uh, capillary hemangioma than girls means the girls are three times more prone to uh, having a capillary hemangioma than boys histopathology show proliferation of the varying sized vascular channel in the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue it presents shortly after birth as a unilateral raised bright red lesion which is usually in the upper lid a deeper uh, lesion appear purplish and aussie also the lesion blanches on pressure and may swell on crying ptosis is frequent and there may be an orbital extension so you know we are discussing about the eyelids and in this is the strawberry nevus or capillary hemangioma that we are talking about in the eyelids so whenever the histopathology you can see the various uh, cha vascular channels and it can be in the dermis and in the subcutaneous tissue and one of the characteristic is that when you put the pressure on uh, the lesion it blanches I mean, it means that it will become white in color and the uh, deeper lesion are usually appear as a purple and when there is an orbital extension it can cause ptosis and it can also call dystopia occasionally the lesion may uh, involve the skin of the face and some patient have a strawberry nevus on the other part of the body it is important to be aware of an association between between the multiple cutaneous lesion and visceral hemangioma and to consider systemic uh, assessment in appropriate cases treatment is described in uh, chapter 4 so there are certain uh, um, a condition which associated with the capillary hemangioma one is faces uh, we will discuss this in the orbit and other is uh, um, in which there will be the decreased platelets associated with it treatment is described in chapter 4 a capillary hemangioma can be easily and successfully treated by regular application of a topical beta blocker to the affected lesion so you can see the figure 2.13 it shows capillary hemangioma A is showing histopathology showing vascular channels and varying size with the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue B is showing the medium sized hemangioma and C is showing the mechanical ptosis due to larger lesion the next is the port wine stain port wine stain is basically the pinkish uh, discoloration of the skin along the uh, dermatome of the trigeminal nerve that is a fifth cranial nerve and one of the uh, characteristic is that as the capillary hemangioma bl blanches on pressure it does not blanch on pressure and if there are certain uh, systemic association with it one of the most common is the Serge Weber syndrome Port point stain nevus flemis uh, is a congenital malformation of the vessel within the superficial dermis Consisting histopathology of the vascular uh, spaces of varying capable caliber separated by the thin fibrous septa. About 10% have associated ocular or CNS involvement, including Sturge Weber and other defined syndrome. Uh, so, just remember that in the histopathology, there will be the uh, vascular channel that will be uh, divided by the fibrous septa. Diagnosis is port wine stain manifests clinically as a sharply demarcated soft pink patch that does not blanch with pressure, more frequently located on the face. So it does not blanch with pressure, I told you already. It is usually unilateral and tends to be aligned with the skin area supplied by one or more division of the trigeminal nerve. 
Darkening to the red or purple takes place with ages and there is a common associated soft tissue hypertrophy. Bleeding may occur from focal overlying lobulation, pyogenic granuloma. Treatment is with laser. Uh, pulse dye is effective in decreasing the skin discoloration, particularly if undertaken early. So, you know, uh, you can just remember it like certain dermatological procedures are usually cured by laser. So, laser is the treatment in case of a port wine stain. Topical uh, preparations such as EMI AQ mode and rapamycin alone or with adjuvant laser, uh, laser show promise results. Uh, soft tissue debulking is used in a small number of cases. Uh, screening for glaucoma should begin in infancy. Systemic investigation is considered in some patients, particularly those with the lesion in a, of the lumbar area. Uh, so uh, basically, there will be the soft tissue hypertrophy that is associated with that. And with that, uh, you can also do soft tissue debulking. Sturge Weber syndrome. Sturge Weber syndrome is encephalo trigeminal angiomatosis, is a congenital or sporadic phacomatosis. Port wine stain, um, leptomeningeal hemangioma, and ocular features. So, Sturge Weber syndrome, most important is uh, we have an ocular features in it. Uh, there are, you can remember, there are four types associated with uh, the Sturge Weber syndrome. Number one is there will be the diffuse choroidal hemangioma there will be the iris heterochromia there will be the uh, glaucoma and epicycleral hemangioma so remember four things are associated with sturge weber syndrome port wine stain extending over the uh, uh, area corresponding to the distribution of one or more branches of the trigeminal nerve Leptomeningeal hemangioma involving the epilateral parietal or occipital region may cause contralateral focal or generalized seizure hemiparesis or hemianopia so whenever there will be the involvement of the uh, brain it will can cause seizures hemiparesis or hemianopia ocular features may include epilateral glaucoma epicycleral hemangioma iris heterochromia and diffuse choroidal hemangioma next is a pyogenic granuloma Pyogenic granuloma is a rapidly growing vascularized proliferation of the granulation tissue that is usually antedated by surgery, trauma or infection, although some cases are idiopathic. So, pyogenic granuloma is basically whenever there is a trauma or surgery and there is a proliferation of the granulation tissue, this is called the pyogenic granuloma. But some cases are idiopathic as well. Clinically, there is, is a painful, rapidly growing vascular uh, uh, granulating polypoidal lesion that may bleed following re uh, relatively trivial trauma. Cutaneous lesion should be excised. Conge conjunctival pyogenic granuloma is discussed in chapter 6. So, let's see the figures. Uh, 2.14 show port wine stain. A is showing the uh, uh, histopathology, showing a widely dilated uh, blood filled spaces that is separated by the thin fibrous septa. B and C is showing the clinical appearance involving the dermatome, and C is showing D to F is showing the uh, progression of the port wine stain over time with associated soft tissue hypertrophy. 2.15 show pyogenic granuloma. <coughs> Next is the neurofibroma. <coughs> Neurofibroma is a cutaneous neurofibroma or benign nerve tumors, usually nodular or pedunculated, that can be found anywhere on the skin. An isolated neurofibroma is common in normal individual, and but if multiple lesions are present, uh, neurofibromatosis should be uh, should be excluded. Plexiform neurofibroma typically present in childhood as a manifestation of the neurofibromatosis type 1 with the characteristic F-shaped deformity of the upper eyelid. Treatment of the solitary lesion involved <coughs> simple excision but removal of the more diffuse plexiform lesion may be uh, difficult. So this is plex uh, plexiform neurofibroma. So neurofibroma is basically the <clears throat> a tumor of the nerve and it is usually associated with nf1 and whenever there is an association with nf1 it is called plexiform neurofibroma and it has a characteristic s-shaped ptosis <clears throat> so you can see figure in this there is an s-shaped ptosis uh, 
सो मेलेग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स लेट्स स्टार्ट मेलेग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स एंड वी विल जस्ट डिस्कस राइट नाउ विद जस्ट रेयर प्री डिस्पोजिंग कंडीशन यंग पेशेंट हु सफर फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंडीशन में डिवेलप हाईलाइट मेलेग्नेंसीज जीरो डबा पिगमेंटोसा कॉल इन कोर्ट सिंड्रोम यूटोरी सिंड्रोम भैसिक सिंड्रोम एंड अदर प्री डिस्पोजिशन so there are certain um, conditions whenever they are associated you can expect the carcinoma of the eyelids as well so one of the most common is zero derma pigmentosa zero derma pigmentosa is characterized by the skin damage on exposure to the sunlight leading to the progressive cutaneous abnormalities <coughs> so you know that there is a, diff- a dna formation uh, problem in a zero derma prognotosa so whenever the uh, light sunlight is exposed there will be the cutaneous abnormalities more than 90% have ocular or periocular involvement and 65% experience photophobia it is inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion affected patient have a bird like facial appearance and a significant propensity to the development of the basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma which are commonly multiple Conjunctival malignancies have also been reported. So you can see, uh, its A is showing the zero derma pigmentosa. It has a bird-like facies, and there can be the BCC, C- SCC, and um, melanoma. Gorlin-Gott syndrome, which is a novoid BCC syndrome, is a rare autosomal dominant disorder characterized by extensive congenital deformities of the eye, face, bone, and central nervous system. many patient develop small multiple uh, bcc during the second uh, <laughs> decade of life and are also a predisposition uh, disposed uh, to um, medulloblastoma breast carcinoma and hodgkin lymphoma so what i remember is the b's mnemonic for the colin cox syndrome b mnemonic mean there will be the bcc there will be the medulloblastoma uh blastoma you can see blastoma breast carcinoma and hodgkin b lymphoma you can say that mutory syndrome is a rare autosomal dominant condition that pre- predisposes to the conti- uh, cutaneous and internal uh, malignancy um uh, cutaneous tumors include bcc sebaceous gland carcinoma and keratoacanthoma colorectal and genital urinary carcinomas are the most common systemic tumor so with the mutant syndrome you can see the git problems git cancer as well basic syndrome can be used to describe two distinct condition basic to pre uh, crystal syndrome and excellent dominant condition characterized by multiple bcc commonly facial including the eyelids associated with things skin changes <clears throat> including follicular indentation without hairs on extensor surface follicular at- atrophoderma uh, hypohidrosis and hypotrichosis and acrokeratosis uh, paraneoplastica of basics in which the eczema like and psoriatic uh, uh, form lesions are associated with the underlying malignancies of the upper respiratory or digestive uh, system tract so basically basic syndrome is divided into two types in the one is a basic dupri crystal uh, syndrome bdcs and other one is um, uh, acro or keratotosis uh, uh, paraneoplastica of basic ap bz and it it is an excellent condition bdcs uh, and what happen is that there will be the multiple bcc there will be the uh, skin changes include as well in which the there will be the uh, hair follicle problem there can be the follicular indentation hypohidrosis hypotrichosis and uh, hypohidrosis <coughs> and acrokeratosis paraneoplastica of basics in which there will be the skin changes like eczema form or psoriatic form lesion and there can be the underlying malignancies of the upper respiratory or digestive tract other predisposition uh, include the immunosuppression proretinoblastoma and albinism <coughs> so this is a gorlin gort syndrome so i told you the bees with the gorlin gort syndrome so one of the most important carcinoma now we are going to discuss is the, about the basal cell carcinoma 
बी सी सी इज़ द मोस्ट कॉमन ह्यूमन मिलिग्नेंसी एंड टिपिकली अफेक्ट ओल्डर इंडिविजुअल्स द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट रिस्क फैक्टर्स आर द फेयर स्किन इन एबिलिटी टू टर्न एंड क्रॉनिक सर्न एक्सपोजर टू द सन लाइट सो बी सी सी इज वेरी कॉमन मिलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स ऑफ द आईलेट एंड इट अकर इन द फेयर स्किन इन विजुअल इन विच वेन देर इज एन एक्सपोजर टू द सन लाइट नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेज अकर इन देंड एंड नेक and 10% about 10% of these involve the eyelid pcc is the by far the most common malignant eyelid tumors accounting for about 90% of all cases it most frequently arises from the lower lid followed by in frequency by the medial uh, medial canthus upper lid and lateral canthus uh, the tumor is slowly growing and locally invasive but not metastasizing Tumors show uh, located near the medial canthus are more prone to invade the orbits and sinuses and are more difficult to manage than those arising elsewhere and carry the greatest risk of recurrences. Tumors that recur following complete in uh, incomplete treatment tends to be more aggressive. So one of the thing is BCC is basically it is a uh, invasive carcinoma, but it is not metastasizing, and one of the most important is the uh, frequency first. Inferior lid margins are more frequently than medial. Then there is a superior, and then there is a lateral. <coughs> and when a medial side of the medial canthus is involved, it is most likely to invade the sinus as well. So, what is the histopathology of the basal cell carcinoma? The tumor arises from the cell uh, uh, that forms the basal layer of the epidermis. The cell proliferates downward and the characteristically exhibit palisading at the periphery of the tumor lobule. So, figure two point one eight. So, this is the histopathology of the basal cell carcinoma. A histopathology showing downward proliferation of lobules of the basophilic cells. B is showing the palisading of the cells at the periphery of the tumor. So, ah, uh, so this is basically the basal cells. They are proliferating. in the epidermis and they are proliferating downward and this is you can see the palisading of the cells on the tumor lobule squamous dif differentiation within a production of the keratin result in a hyperkeratotic type of pcc they can also be sebaceous and adenoid differentiation while the growth of elongated strands and islands of the cells embedded in a dense fibrous stroma resulting in a sclerosing type of tumor so there are certain um, conditions uh, bcc can uh, be uh, differentiated it can also have some uh, squamous differentiation it can also have sebaceous adenoid differentiation and it can also have a sclerosing type of tumor so what of what are the clinical features so one thing is very important one is that it have um, it ha can it can present as a nodule formation and there will be if if there is an ulceration there will be the rolled margins and when other important thing is there will be the blood vessels that are associated with it Island uh, BCC conforms to one of the morphological patterns. Nodular BCC is a shiny, firm, pearly nodule with a small, overlying dilated blood vessels. Initially, growth is slow, and it may take the tumor one to two years to reach a diameter of a point five centimeter. So basically, pearly nodule is one of the type of the BCC. Nodulo ulcerative BCC, which is also known as rodent ulcer, is centrally ulcerated with a pearly raised roll edges and dilated and irregular blood vessels over its lateral margins so it will having a rolled edges appearance of the ulcer with time it may erode a large portion of the eyelids uh, sclerosing morphoic bcc is less common and may be difficult to diagnose but because it infiltrates laterally beneath the epidermis as an indurated plaque The margins of the tumor may be impossible to delineate clinically, and the lesions tend to be much more extensive on palpation than on inspection. On cursory examination, uh, a sclerosing BCC may stimulate a localized area of chronic uh, blepharitis. So basically, it uh, sclerosing BCC presented a plaque-like function. Other types are not usually found on the lid. They are cystic, adenoid, pigmented, and multiple superficial. Tip sclerosing BCC can mimic a localized area of unilateral chronic blepharitis. So you can see this is a clinical appearance of the basal cell carcinoma. It is showing small uh, lid margin 
tumor b is showing the large nodular tumor c is showing the rodent ulcer uh, t is showing the large rodent ulcer and you can see that there is a central ulceration with the rolled wedges and there is a telangiectic tick vessels e is showing the sclerosing tumor and f is showing the extensive sclerosing tumors so next is basically the um, squamous cell carcinoma introduction squamous cell carcinoma is a much less common but typically more aggressive tumor than bcc with metastasis to regional lymph node in about 20% of the cases. Histopathology showed dysplastic changes throughout the thickness of the epidermis. Surveil careful surveillance of the regional lymph nodes is therefore an important aspect of the initial management. So one of the things about the uh, squamous cell carcinoma is that it metastasizes to the regional lymph nodes as well. The tumor may also exhibit perineural spread to the intracranial uh, cavity via the orbit. SCC account for 10, 5 to 10 percent of the island malignancy and may arise de novo or from the pre-existing actinic keratosis or carcinoma in situ, bovine disease, intraepidermal carcinoma. Immunocompromised individuals such as those with acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or following renal transplantation are at increased risk, and so as are those with the predisposing syndrome such as xeroderma pigmentosa. Uh, the tumor has a predilection for the lower eyelid and the lid margin. The, it is most commonly occur in older individual with a fair complexion and a history of a chronic sun exposure. The diagnosis of the squamous cell carcinoma may sometimes be difficult because certain ostensibly benign lesions such as keratoacanthoma and cutaneous horn may relieve, his, reveal histological evidence of invasive squamous cell carcinoma at a deeper level of sectioning. So major important things is basically the risk factors associated with the squamous cell carcinoma. Number one is basically it can arise from de novo means it without new lesion new lesion second it can arise from a uh, bovine disease actinic keratosis we have already discussed that actinic keratosis is, uh, have a predisposition to the squamous cell carcinoma following aids if we have a renal transplantation and chronic sun, uh, sun exposure xeroderma pigmentosa Histopathology, the tumor arises from the squamous layer of the epidermis. It is composed of a variable, uh, really sized groups of atypical epithelial cells with prominent nuclei and abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm within a dermis. Well differentiated tumors may show characteristic keratin pearls and intercellular bridges desmosome. So you can see figure. Uh, 2.20 is showing the carcinoma in situ. Histopathology showing the uh, changes, dysplastic changes throughout the thickness of the epidermis and B is showing the carcinoma in situ. And you can see figure 2.21. The squamous cell carcinoma, a histopathology showing acanthotic. Acanthotic means the thickening of the prickle cell layer. Squamous epithelium and eosinophilic uh, islands of the uh, pink uh, islands of the dysplastic squamous epithelium within a dermis. So these are the islands of dysplastic squamous epithelium. B is showing the nodular tumor with surface keratosis. C is showing the ulcerating tumor and D is showing the cutaneous horn formation. So one of the important thing is about uh, the squamous cell carcinoma is that it is a um, um, uh, usually have an ulceration with the sharp uh, edges and <laughs> clinical features the clinical types are variable and there are no pathognomonic characteristic the tumors uh, may be indistinguishable clinically from a bcc but a surface vascularization is usually absent growth is more rapid and hyperkeratosis is more common Nodular um, mm, SSC is characterized by hyperkeratotic nodule with which, um, that may develop crusting, erosions, and fissure. Ulcerating uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma has a red base and sharply defined indurated and inverted border, but pearly margins and telegestasias are usually not present. Cutaneous uh, horn with underlying invasive squamous cell carcinoma. 
so basically the squamous cell carcinoma presents with the um to us with the sharp edges and it is usually hyperkeratotic and there will be the absence of the telangiectatic vessels tip ostensibly benign lesions such as keratohecanthoma and cutaneous horn may reveal histological evidence of squamous cell carcinoma in a deeper level of sectioning so i think that's it for the uh, kansky lecture series part uh, four we are going to discuss about the tumors in the uh, next topic